The royal wedding of Juan Carlos of Spain and Princess Sophia of Greece and Denmark was a giant event back on May 14th of 1962 in Athens. The wedding was a huge merge between two world superpowers, leading some to speculate whether this was a marriage of love or power. Let's fast forward a few decades. Juan Carlos and German aristocrat Karina Zu Sein Wittgenstein are both gun enthusiasts. They met at a shooting party in February 2004. The king was having trouble with his shotgun, so Karina helped him. Karina was a business consultant born in Denmark and raised in Germany. She was previously married to Prince Casimir Zu Sein Wittgenstein of Germany, her second husband, but they split in 2005. She opted to keep the name and the princess title. They had an instant connection. Juan Carlos called Karina up to 10 times a day. She met his friends. He met her children. They were both very busy people, but they found time to meet in Madrid and spend time together. Their relationship lasted from 2004 to 2009, but the Spanish public knew nothing about it, believing he was happily married to Queen Sophia. Previous premonitions about the royal and possibly faux love between King Carlos and Queen Sophia were seemingly confirmed by the king when he told his mistress Karina that he and the queen had an arrangement to represent the crown. However, they led totally separate lives. Juan Carlos had established strong support from the Spanish people as the head of state after dictator Francisco Franco died in 1975. He oversaw Spain's transition to democracy after the dark years of the Spanish Civil War. Three days before Spain's elections in 2004, Al-Qaeda directed a series of train bombings on a commuter train system in Madrid. Juan Carlos responded to the tragedy, attended the vigils, and became a symbol of empathy, leadership, and strength at a vulnerable time in Spain. At the same time, Juan Carlos's and Karina's love was blossoming. In 2008, at the height of their relationship, Spain entered an economic recession alongside the rest of the world. Unemployment was at a staggering 23%, and the Spanish population would have lost their mind if they found out about Carlos's love affair. They starved while he showered his mistress in luxurious gifts. In 2009, King Juan Carlos visited Karina's father and told him of his intention to marry her. He told Karina's father that things were complicated and would take some time, but ultimately wanted him to know that he was very serious about Karina. Some say that the king even consulted a divorce attorney about ending his 40-year marriage to the queen. Karina was an experienced political strategist and foresaw the downfall of her relationship with the king. She predicted that their relationship could seriously damage his reputation as king and destabilize the monarchy. That same year, Karina's father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and only had a few months to live. She decided to end her relationship with the king to spend time with her father. Juan Carlos shocked Karina with more terrible news after her father's funeral. He had been in a three-year relationship with another woman, in addition to his relationship with her and his marriage to the queen. Karina mourned the loss of her father and the betrayal of her ex. She was under the impression that she was in a monogamous relationship with the king, aside from Queen Sophia, that is. Karina was devastated and could never forgive him. That's where the story should end, but it doesn't. Though the relationship was over, the pair remained friends. Juan Carlos contacted Karina because he was diagnosed with a tumor that he believed was cancerous. Karina stayed close to him as he navigated his health issues and even slept on the couch next to his hospital bed before surgery. Thankfully, the biopsy showed that the tumor was benign. During this time, Queen Sophia realized how much the king emotionally relied on Karina and directed staff to keep her at a distance. Tensions rose between Karina and the royal family. Juan Carlos' staff asked Karina to leave the hospital. After he was released, however, Karina continued to visit him as he recovered in Madrid. The king brokered a deal with Saudi Arabia to establish a consortium dedicated to building a holy train line connecting Medina to Mecca to minimize travel time for Muslims on their annual pilgrimage to Mecca. A consortium is an agreement between two or more parties who decide to pool their resources to pursue a common goal. The Saudi Railways Organization awarded $9.4 billion to the Saudi-Spanish Al Shula Consortium to start the next phase of the high-speed railway project. The partnership involved 12 Spanish companies and two Saudi companies. The project experienced delays and the Saudi government threatened the Spanish railway project to speed production or halt the project. Saudi King Abdullah transferred $100 million to a Panama-based offshore fund controlled by King Carlos. Both the Saudi and Spanish kings were investigated for crimes related to this payment. King Abdullah defended it as a thank you gift to Juan Carlos for organizing a religious understanding conference in Madrid. But it gets weirder. 
During his relationship with Karina, the king established a close relationship with her children. For her son's 10th birthday in 2012, the king took Karina and her children on a safari in Botswana. Though it was presented as a birthday present for her son, Karina believed this was the king's attempt to rekindle their romantic relationship. On April 11, 2012, Juan Carlos shot an elephant dead on the safari. He was proud of this and even took several photos with the deceased animal in front of horrified onlookers. The public was not happy about the elephant hunt. Even fellow hunting enthusiast Karina said she would never kill an elephant. The king also fell and fractured his hip during this trip. The Botswana trip brought much of the monarch's corruption and dishonesty into the limelight. His unfaithfulness to Queen Sophia, unnecessary luxury trips during an economic recession, and visits to countries where Spain had no diplomatic representation. Various corruption cases into the king's son-in-law and daughter were already underway, so a magnifying glass on the royal family only increased after the ill-fated Botswana's trip. Remember, that 100 million euro gift from Saudi Arabia? Well, now that Juan Carlos was under the microscope after the Botswana trip scandal, it became public knowledge that King Carlos had transferred what remained of that 100 million euro gift to Karina. Soon after undergoing tumor surgery, he was thinking about who he wanted to benefit from his will. He promised to take care of Karina and her children, but feared that the royal family would not honor his wishes. This shady deal between Saudi Arabia and Spain was then partially transferred to Karina, and by partially we mean 65 million euros. The transfer caused intelligence officials to believe the king was involved in money laundering or was perhaps trying to hide the money. Further investigations into Karina began. She argued that the money was gifted out of nothing but love. The Spanish people were outraged. As all of this came to light while Spain was amidst another economic downturn from COVID-19, Karina claimed that harassment against her escalated. She was advised not to speak to the press regarding her ex-relationship with the king or the funds he transferred to her. The Spanish Supreme Court opened an investigation into King Juan Carlos as well. In 2014, King Juan Carlos abdicated the throne and was succeeded by his son Felipe. His abdication meant losing immunity to prosecution, but he was still responsible for attending official engagements, trade trips, and travel to the Middle East. The Spanish Supreme Court could only investigate wrongdoings that took place after his 2014 abdication. A Spanish police officer had recorded his conversations with wealthy aristocrats, including a woman believed to be Karina. In the leaked audio recordings, the woman mentioned that King Juan Carlos would often go to Arab countries and return with suitcases full of money. Sometimes, up to $5 million in cash. She claimed that she saw this money personally and witnessed the king using a machine to count it all. These recordings became the crux of the investigations opened by Swiss and Spanish prosecutors into the king. The king later admitted that he left Spain and was living in the United Arab Emirates. Things got hotter when Karina decided to sue her ex-lover, the king, over harassment and unlawful surveillance from Spain's CNI, the National Intelligence Center. She filed a restraining order that forbade the king from contacting her or coming within 150 meters of her. The king demanded that the $100 million gift transferred to her be returned to him, but Karina refused, causing the king to publicly state that she had stolen it. One lawyer began a petition for the cash to be transferred to the Spanish public health care system to benefit healthcare workers who were working overtime for minimum pay during the COVID-19 pandemic. Karina responded, saying she'd leave it up to the Swiss prosecutor. She believed that Spain's National Intelligence Center orchestrated the ongoing investigation and public interest in her personal life and finances under the king's guidance. An English judge investigating Karina's claims of harassment asked the Spanish monarchy to decide whether Juan Carlos is still considered part of the royal family despite abdication. This will determine whether he has immunity against prosecution. Karina argues that she experienced threats, allegations, and harassment over the funds that were irrevocably transferred to her from the king. She says that this has led to deteriorating personal relationships, a need for medical treatment, and immense profitability loss to her business. The monarchy confirms that Juan Carlos is still a member of the royal family. He will enjoy diplomatic immunity, and that will prevent him from facing intense consequences. As of summer 2021, Karina still possessed the money transferred to her by her ex-royal ex-boyfriend. Click here to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comment section if Karina should give the money back or not.